Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our webinar today, Get the Tech Training Your Nonprofit Has Been Asking For and That You'll Actually Want to Take. Before we get started, I just want to go over a few housekeeping items, so all callers will be muted. If you have questions, you should see a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. If you lose your internet connection, feel free to reconnect using the link that was emailed to you. If you have to drop off early or if you want to watch the webinar again, we'll be posting the webinar on our website at techsoup.org slash community slash events dash webinars. We'll also be sending an email with the presentation, the recording, and any relevant links that we talk about today. So just a little bit about TechSoup before we get started. We are located in 236 countries and territories. We serve over 1.1 million nonprofits offering donated or discounted technologies. Uh, you can see a list here of several of the technology companies that we partner with. And if you're interested in finding out if your organization is eligible, feel free to go to the URL that you see here, and my colleague Stephen will also be messaging this out. Um, so before I go ahead and make introductions, I just want to make sure that you guys can hear me okay. So if you don't mind chatting in where you're calling in from in the audience chat box that you should see at the bottom of your screen, um, I'll go ahead and read a few of those out. So we have uh, Donna calling in from Sarasota. We have Joe from Seattle. Uh, we have Larkin from Albany, uh, Longmont, Colorado. Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay, awesome. So we have people calling in from, from all over. Um, thanks for joining us today. I know it's kind of a, a strange time, so we're happy um, that you guys can be here with us today. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and make introductions. So my name is Seema Tucker. I'm the Senior Manager of Content here at TechSoup. We have Stephen Davidson on the back end. He's the Marketing Associate at TechSoup. And then we have our main presenters today, so we have Mona Rina. So Mona is the Senior Director of New Services Development at TechSoup. Mona develops new technology solutions to help nonprofits with their digital transformation. At TechSoup, she tries, strives to help over 1 million global nonprofits through their digital journey by providing them with solutions ranging from technology services to online learning for their staff. We also have Apurva Chandra, who's with Microsoft. And Apurva leads the digital skills training effort within Microsoft's Tech for Social Impact team. His mission is to make impactful digital skills training available to all nonprofit staff and volunteers worldwide. He believes that improved use of technology within nonprofits will lead to improved mission outcomes. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Mona. Thank you so much, Seema, and good afternoon to everyone. Um, I just wanted to quickly go over the agenda for today. Um, Apurva will be introducing uh, Microsoft's Tech for Social Impact and their vision for digital skills um, for nonprofits. Uh, and then I'm going to be presenting an introduction to the Digital Skills Center. We'll go through a little bit about what are the, the main points that we've developed specifically for nonprofits um, within our online courses. And then we're going to try our best to keep the bulk of the webinar open for Q&A. Uh, I'm going to try and keep at least uh, 20 to 30 minutes open towards the end. Um, so over to you, Apurva. All right. Well, thank you, Mona. And thank you, everyone, for, for taking time out today to learn a little bit more about the uh, Digital Skills Center and the training options that are available to nonprofit staff and volunteers around the world. So um, before we dive into the specific training, I want to talk a little bit about the team that I work for inside of Microsoft, which is um, referred to as the Microsoft Tech for Social Impact team. Uh, now we're inside of a broader umbrella group called Microsoft Philanthropies, but our team in particular um, was formed about two and a half years ago, and we were formed with the explicit purpose of supporting nonprofits um, through the use of Microsoft technologies and making sure that they, they have the tools and solutions they need to be successful and move their missions forward. Um, again, like I mentioned, the team, the team was created about two and a half years ago, and it's a group of just amazing professionals that, you know, many of whom worked in the nonprofit sector for years and years. Many of folks like myself uh, have more of a traditional business background, but we all came together because we're passionate about supporting nonprofits around the world. Now, another, I mean, a big aspect of what we do is providing relevant, affordable, and innovative cloud solutions. And so, I mean, what that means is, you know, we, we have 
we have access to Microsoft's cloud solutions on-premise uh, programs, as, as you might be aware. But what we try to do is build on top of those to make sure that those products are uniquely specialized for nonprofits, both small and large, uh, both in the U.S., outside of the U.S., um, those who have strong Internet connections, those that don't have Internet access, um, those that speak English or Spanish, Arabic, French. So we, we try to do a lot of things. Our ambitions are quite, quite big, um, but we have a really motivated team around the world that's, that's dedicated to doing just that. The third aspect that I, um, that I particularly enjoy is the social investment model. And so what that means is, you know, we have, we, we own our, our P&L. So we take on both of the revenue and, and the costs and any incremental revenue that we generate, uh, we get to reinvest into philanthropic, philanthropic efforts such as um, affordable housing initiatives, skills and employability programs, as well as a pretty broad technology donation program. And, and lastly, and this is something that you know, we're going to be talking about quite a bit today and something that I focus on is our digital capacity building programs uh, because we know that it's, it's not enough just to hand over technology solutions to nonprofits. Um, we also feel like we have an obligation to work with the nonprofits and taking it that, that last mile, showing, um, showing organizations how to, how to use all of the latest and greatest features um, you know, we release new products and features at a pretty breakneck pace, and we feel like we have a responsibility to work with nonprofits to show them how these tools can actually move their missions forward, and that they're, you know, they really, they really can have step change impacts on, on creating social good. So, with that in mind, I mean, we, with that in mind, we, we have a long partnership with TechSoup that lasts many, many, many years, um, you know, and not just the validation services that um, I think many of you are aware of, as well as our on-premise donation program, which I'm, I'm sure many of you are aware of as well. Um, but we have, we have a longstanding partnership when it comes to capacity building as well. And so we know that nobody has the scale that TechSoup does, and you know, we believe that scale matches our ambition for reaching nonprofit staff and volunteers all around the world. And so we partnered with TechSoup um, you know, about a year ago, I guess a little less than a year ago, to start putting together a set of bite-sized trainings on Microsoft products that are curated for nonprofit staff and volunteers. Um, and so Mona will be going into this in a lot more detail, but I just wanted to share a little bit more about the motivation of why we're doing this. Um, like I mentioned, we're combining Microsoft content along with TechSoup's deep, deep expertise with nonprofits. And we're investing in civil society infrastructure to ensure that NGOs in all countries have access to our cloud solutions as well as the services, support, and education that will help them reach the social impact that their missions depend on. Um, and so through these programs, um, and again, we'll go through them in more detail, but you'll see that they provide opportunities for nonprofit staff to learn how to accomplish their organizational tasks at a pace that fits their needs, um, at a pace that at a pace that matches their lifestyle as well, um, and you know we're we're quite proud of you know what we've what we've put together so far. So uh, lastly, on my end, I mean a lot of the motivation behind this is we did do a survey along with TechSoup that showed that 60% of nonprofit orgs say that they need improved IT training, and our theory of change here is that improved use of Microsoft products will lead to improved mission outcomes. And so, you know, our ambition with this is to reach 1 million nonprofit employees and volunteers with training. Um, it is, is an awfully large number, um, but we believe that, you know, we have, we have the scale and TechSoup has the scale and ambition uh, to, help us, to help us reach that, that pretty big number. And so, so, yeah, I mean, just, again, I'll, I'll hand it over to Mona in a minute, but what we've delivered so far, um, we have trainings on Power BI as well as Teams, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, um, along with other, other products like SharePoint, Outlook, OneDrive, Planner, and we have a lot more on the way, which I, I know Mona will talk about. So, you know, with that, I, I think I can go on to our first poll question uh, before we actually hand it off to Mona.
Um, I think that's right. So I, I think I can just move over. And I, I think if our, if we can make this, if we can get this poll live, um, then we can, I guess, establish the transition and then we can move over to Mona. All right, Mona, I don't, I think you might be on mute because we can't hear you. Oh yeah, sure. Um, sorry. Um, yeah, thanks so much for that, uh, Apurva. Um, I am actually just looking at the poll, um, and I see um, there's still a bunch oh, of have... results coming in. So let's yeah, give it have... another 10 seconds. All right, so the the first question we had is, have you ever taken an online course before? Um, and uh, so far, actually, we have over 85% of our audience that has um, taken an online course before. Um, the second question is, have you ever taken a digital skills center course? Um, and only 8% of our audience um, has. So I think this is, we have the perfect audience for this webinar. Um, yes, we do. <laughs> perfect. Um, all right. And, and you should be seeing the results of that survey on your screen uh, right about now. Um, and, you know, I just, before I jump into the Digital Skills Center, I did want to take the opportunity to speak a little bit about the TechSoup Courses Program. Uh, it's a program that we're exceedingly proud of. We launched this in 2017. Um, and what you see on your screens is, is our audience heat map. Um, and, you know, in the last uh, three years, uh, we now have over 20,000 learners from 93 countries. And every learner on our platform has, on average, taken two courses. Uh, so it's something that we're very proud about, uh, of. Uh, you know, TechSoup made the investment um, in coming up with nonprofit-specific training on um, topics. Right? We realize that there's a lot of information out there, um, but that nonprofits actually have very specific challenges with those topics. And what we set out to do was build online training that nonprofits could use. Um, so, you know, Based on that, we found that one of our best partners is really Microsoft. Um, you know, as we as we move, uh, as we help move nonprofits towards the cloud, you know, we realized, as you saw from our our survey that Microsoft and TechSoup did together, that over 60% of nonprofits actually said they want more technical training on these products. Um, and while uh, you know, the products that uh, Kapoorva mentioned, the topics uh, like Word, Excel, PowerPoint seem like very everyday uh, products that we all use, we also realize that a lot of nonprofit staff actually don't know how to use it effectively and efficiently and don't even realize how many new features there are now in those products. Um, so that's, that's what we set out to do with the Microsoft Digital Skills Center. Um, the intention was to create a repository of online learning for nonprofit staff. Um, we set out to take ordinary products that we all use that we, you know, like Excel, for example, and really create actionable trainings around everyday challenges that nonprofit staff face. Um, now, of course, um, you know, TechSoup has uh, the advantage of having a very large nonprofit database. And 80% of the nonprofits that TechSoup works with are all small and micro organizations that have less than 10 staff. So when we went out to the audience, um, you know, to our, uh, our core constituents, um, and we asked them, you know, uh, what their profiles were or what their biggest issues were, what we kept hearing was um, that a lot of the nonprofit staff actually have multiple roles. So the kind of trainings that they needed, um, you know, they had, they had specific challenges. They didn't have time to actually go in and do a four-hour course. Um, 
but they needed a repository of information where they could find the help they need when they need it. Um, and that's really what uh, we wanted to do. Tech lessons that nonprofits could use in real life. Um, so I would actually like to do a second poll um, at this point, um, uh, which is to understand how many of our um, our current participants have staff training in their organizations. Um, so I am. So hopefully you're seeing that survey now. And yes, I do see um, a lot of results coming in. Uh, so you should be seeing two questions again. Uh, does your organization have any staff training programs? And would you like your organization to get access to staff training programs? Uh, we'll just give it we'll just give it a few seconds. And do chat out to us if you are having any problems seeing with the survey. All right, so um, we have some very interesting results. Um, so about 37% of our audience actually has, um, have staff training programs in their organization. Um, but 94% actually want to get access to staff training programs. So that's really interesting, right? I mean, it's, it probably speaks uh, to the fact that, you know, there's always, more programs that we want to have access to. And I think it, it also speaks to uh, Apurva's point about uh, technology moving and changing at a breakneck uh, pace, where so many things are changing, so many things are that, that we need to have constantly refresh our training. Um, so really with this digital skill set, uh, um, you know, this is meant to be a repository for skills development for nonprofit staff. Uh, we currently have over 30 courses 19 of them we made free. So um, all of the courses follow a learning track. What we try to do is provide all nonprofit learners uh, with a training program, right? So very similar to what you would if you went into um, a university or an actual class. The idea is to provide you a step-by-step -step process by which you can learn the topic. Um, so you will see for all of our learning tracks, you know, we have 100 level courses, we have 200 level courses. So the 100 level courses are always introductory and always free. Uh, it's uh, also purposely kept free. So even if it's a topic like Power BI, for example, um, that you just want to find out a little more about, or you just need an introduction to, you don't really need to be an expert at it or understand how to do specific things with it, then you can always take the introductory Power BI course and understand if that's something that is relevant to your work. Um, our 200 level courses are uh, what we call slightly more advanced. Um, and you know what we do with 200 level courses is we use every course to address a specific need. So again, you know, if we have Power BI, we have three 200 level courses where, uh, you know, one of them would address the specific problem of visualizing data. And then that's all that course talks about. Uh, again, we wanted to make sure that all of our training is in, you know, is in small modules um, and it can be found very easily by our nonprofits. In addition to that, um, you know, what we've realized from talking to a lot of nonprofits is that they want to learn and they want to get tips and tricks on how to use these products from other nonprofits or other nonprofit ex uh, experts. Um, so we introduced uh, Ask the Experts series uh, into the Digital Skills Center this year. Um, and what these series are is it's a one-hour live uh, webinar where you have an expert that has experience with nonprofits uh, answering questions directly about uh, a specific topic, like teams, for, ex for, for um, example. 
Um, and then, you know, the tracks are really important because we find that a lot of nonprofits came back to us and said, you know, we currently have over 150 courses that are available on our catalog. And they really wanted to have a way in which to find all of those topics together. Um, we also like tracks because we find that we can not only bundle everything together, we can also provide, you know, deeper discounts to nonprofits that, that want to take a lot more uh, bundled training on a specific topic. Um, another uh, thing I do want to point out is the certificate of completion. So for every single course that's done on um, on the Digital Skills Center, there is a, a certificate that you can get, you can download, um, and the certificate is from Microsoft and TechSoup. Um, and you know this is something that a lot of nonprofits actually write back to us about. Uh, especially when they're learning something new, having a certificate is, um, you know, they love getting a certificate for that. Um, uh, okay, so this is a little bit of an example around what the learning tracks look like. So you can see that the Teams uh, for Nonprofits uh, Collaboration Tools has a 101, which is an introduction to getting started, a 201, which is using advanced functions inside Teams, and then the Ask the Expert event. Um, I do want to mention specifically uh, the Teams track I know it says here that the track costs $70, but um, we actually made this track free uh, for um, everyone um, because we, we know how important it is and, uh, you know, that a lot of nonprofits currently working remotely and a lot of our nonprofits use Microsoft products. Um, so, you know, this is something that we've done together with the Microsoft team um, to make this track available for nonprofits um, that would that want to start using Teams more effectively. Um, so in your chat, uh, you should be seeing um, the links to get access to this uh, track if you're interested. Um, the other uh, point that I've been making is training context contextualized for nonprofit staff challenges. Um, this is something that came out of our audience interviews, and we found, especially when we're talking about products like Bar BI. Um, you know, that, that our nonprofits around the world, um, you know, they need it for very specific things. They need the, the challenges to be contextualized um, and the solutions to be exactly what they're working on. So throughout the Digital Skills Center, you would see that, uh, you know, anytime we make a course, we actually think about our nonprofit persona. We think about who, who that staff is, uh, what are the problems they have, uh, what are the goals that they have uh, from this course? So, you know, you'll see here, I, I've taken a screenshot, and you can see that, you know, uh, this is for the Power BI course. So the persona of the nonprofit learner in the Power BI course um, is Camilla. Um, and, you know, she wants, she has to generate reports using Power BI. And then she's given very specific goals. And the way that we built these courses is like a, is the journey that Camilla undergoes as she's trying to achieve those goals. Um, and that brings me to the other point where the entire journey is structured as micro, as micro learnings. Now, this is a term that has become a little bit of a buzzword now. Um, but essentially what it means is that you know, the entire large topic of Power BI is broken up into specific objectives. So, um, and we do that very purposefully. So anytime you go into one of our courses, and again, there's a screenshot here of the Power BI module, um, the first thing you'll see is orientation. And the first thing we talk about in orientation is learning objectives. So, you know, we want to make sure that any learner who comes into any one of our courses knows exactly what they will learn from that course. Um, every module is then structured on these learning objectives, right? So for Power BI, for example, since we have four learning objectives, there are four modules. So you as a learner, say, you know, you already know three, how to do three things. You just really need to know to do that one thing. Now, we realize how frustrating it is to go through a one-hour video, for example, and then search for that one point in the video that addresses the problems that you want addressed. So instead, we use the learning management system that we have um, to build these courses to be modular so that you can find the exact module that you need um, to get your answers. Um, and, you know, another... Uh, Another aspect of the digital skills courses is the activities that we embed into it. 
again, what we learn is, you know, most of our learners are adult learners that don't really have time. So even if they come in for like half an hour and they learn to do one thing, um, sometimes it's hard for them to implement it immediately, right? You forget that learning. So what we've done is we've embedded activities inside the course itself. Um, and those activities might be something simple like a question based on what you've just learned, right? Or a poll, as you see here, a survey. But we find that these activities not only in, increase the learner engagement, they also give the learners an opportunity to practice what they've just learned, right? So that the training stays with them longer. Um, so that's, um, you know, we, the, the main objective of all of this was to really create uh, trainings that engage our learners, that help them with their uh, daily challenges. Now, uh, as Apurva mentioned, we do have um, courses that um, are around more product-based topics. Um, we focused on all of the basic topics like Word, Excel, Teams, Power BI, Planner, Outlook, SharePoint, OneDrive. Uh, we have a lot of Ask the Expert series planned for all of these topics. Um, but you know what we'd really like to uh, we really want to take it to the next level now. This is the first year that the Digital Skills Center has been available. Um, and we would love to know from you what are the topics that you would like us to start working on. Um, so, you know, this, this brings us into our next poll um, where you will see that we have about 10 topics. Um, these are topics that we have picked based on information that we've got from our learners, um, you know, based on uh, emails that they've sent us. But we'd like to know from you, which of these topics would you be interested in? You can choose all, all that apply uh, for you. And then if you have any more that you'd like to suggest to us, please do use the chat uh, to do so. Um, so this, this might take a little bit of time, so I'm going to give it about, uh, give everyone about a minute. Um, and then if you have any questions, please do chat them out to us. Um, Mona, just while we're waiting, I, we got a couple questions about what is Power BI. Um, do you mind taking like a quick second to explain Power BI? Or uh, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Apurva, you want to take that? Let me get off mute. Yeah, so Power, I mean, Power BI is, um, is, how can I best describe it? I mean, it's a tool for data visualization. So think of it as the next step of Excel pivot charts and tables. Um, it's a really in, engaging way to, to look at data to make, to make business decisions. Um, you, know, you, can, you can do a lot of great things with plugging in from external data sources so that you don't need to manually update charts. Um, it's something that more and more organizations are using to gather big, big amounts of data to you know, either, either report out in, with dashboards um, or making, making really critical business decisions for um, business decision makers or any, any sort of executive presentation. Um, I know that the folks at, at TechSoup have, you know, they just did an Ask the Expert session on Power BI, so I learned quite a bit during that session. I've learned quite a bit taking the Power BI 101 and 102 course. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll hand it back over to uh, Mona and anyone else at TechSoup. I know that you guys are, you know, developing quite the data practice, and you're helping a lot of, a lot of nonprofits get up to speed with it as well. Uh, thank you for that, Apurva. Actually, you know, um, we, the Power BI courses are ones that we are very, very proud of. It was a collaboration with the Microsoft team. Uh, we worked together to convert a lot of pretty tech-heavy content into content that, uh, you know, nonprofit learners that have never used Power BI before can use. Um, we also actually um, book-ended the Power BI series um, with a series on impact measurement. Um, and we found, uh, we did this series on impact measurement, and then we did another Ask the Expert um, with our TechSoup Power BI expert, um, you know, to really go into the details of how to measure um, the impact that your nonprofit uh, has. Um, 
All right, so we have a whole bad bunch of entries into the poll. And, you know, I see that um, a, lot of our, um, a lot of our audiences actually um, want more basic skills. So that's really interesting. But there's a lot of interest in data analysis um, in Microsoft Dynamics as well. Um, a lot of, um, you know, the, so far, um, a lot of our audience actually wants more cloud-based document management training, uh, developing an efficient remote team, basics of project management, uh, managing effective meetings on the cloud. Um, this, is, this, is really, this is really great. Um, all right, so I'm going to publish the results. Um, so this is this is actually really great for us to understand, um, and you know, uh, it lines up really well uh, with the work that we are planning in the next phase. Um, one of the focus areas for our team now is really global expansion. As you can see, we only have courses in English, but we have learners from 93 countries, um, and TechSoup uh, is a large global network. Uh, we have 69 partners around the world um, that help us in delivering our programs. Um, so with courses, we are currently working on Spanish translations, but we are eager to make all of these courses available uh, through our regional centers in Asia, Africa, Europe, uh, Latin America, and Australia uh, to nonprofits. Um, are currently we are working on Spanish, but we're also looking at Arabic, French, and German translations of our platform. Um, and what's really interesting is, you know, we've been talking a lot about what should our focus areas be for the next set of courses. Um, and we are really focusing on basic skills um, because we find that what, now that we've spoken about um, products and how to use products, um, we really want to focus on you know, what are the other digital literacy and basic skills that those products need? Um, so I could see from that poll that project management was really high, document management on the cloud, which is great. Those are exactly the, um, the kind of topics that we've been, uh, we've been working on. Um, and having said that, you know, again, I do want to share this email with all of our participants. Um, you know, the objective is, our objective together is to build um, a digital skill center that nonprofits can use um, and benefit from. So we would love to hear from you. If you have other ideas, um, you know, please do write to us at learn at techsoup.org. Um, our team is, is absolutely fabulous. We love to learn uh, from you. We want to make stuff that you can use. Um, and, you know, our learning staff would love to hear from you. Any challenges you want to share with us or anything that you need us to work on, we would love to do so. Um, I did notice that uh, in the chat uh, we did have a couple of questions around um, how staff can access these courses. Um, so the objective of the Digital Skills Center is for all nonprofit staff to access these courses. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, most of the courses in here are free. Certainly, all introductory courses are free. Uh, we want nonprofit staff to be able to utilize the products that are being made available through, um, through Microsoft um, to them. Now, registration on the platform is free. Um, you know, there's a little link that's being provided there. We can chat out the link as well. Um, it takes just barely two minutes. It's just the objective is to get your username and password, essentially. Um, each staff member has to register and set up their own password. We get asked this all the time. Unfortunately, we cannot set up passwords for anyone, um, obviously because of PII considerations. Um, the Digital Skills Catalog ha it has its own catalog. It's very easy to find those courses. Um, and, you know, if you have any questions at all, if you would like us to help you in getting all of your staff access to these free trainings, please do drop us an email at learn at techsoup.org. We would be very, very happy to help you. In addition, I do want to um, mention that we just put out a, a, a special coupon, um, Digital Skills 20. So if, if you do find uh, any of these courses interesting and you find that they are paid, please do use this coupon and you have a 20% discount on that course. 
Um, this coupon is valid until June 30th, so please feel free to share it with all of your staff. Um, and, um, you know, if you have any questions, please reach out to us. Uh, we would love to help you. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it back to Seema. All right. Thank you, Apoorva. Thank you, Mona. So we have some time for Q&A. Um, so if you guys have questions, feel free to use the Q&A box, um, and I will keep an eye on those. Um, so the first question that we have is, okay, how do I show complete? How do I show I completed the course, and how can I know that my staff completed a course? So, Mona, do you want to answer that? Sure. Um, so, like I mentioned, uh, each course has a course completion certificate. Now, um, you know, we understand that for adult learners, it will be very frustrating to go through every single module of the course and mark it complete, especially if you already know 90% of what's in the course. So with this platform, what we do is we use tech points. Uh, anytime you do an activity inside a course, you get tech points. Uh, so you'll find that each of these courses have a certain number of tech points that you need to uh, that you need to complete. And usually, we keep the tech points very fairly low for the basic courses because we know most of the knowledge is known. But we just want to make sure that you came in there, you read a few things, um, and once you finish the last survey. So every course at the end has a post-completion uh, questionnaire. And that questionnaire is really for us to understand if that course was useful to you. But it's also for you to understand if you felt that you improved by learning. So you'll find there's a lot of questions uh, in there that speak to the learning objectives of the course. So once you get your tech points, um, which is really simple, uh, and you finish that post-completion, that post-course completion questionnaire, um, you should be able to download uh, your certificate. And actually, I uh, downloaded my certificate and even um, added it to my LinkedIn profile. Um, so, you know, you, it's a PDF. Uh, you can use it any way you like. All right, perfect. And then um, do you quickly, can you quickly speak to kind of just um, what's happening with COVID and pivoting, and I know a lot of people are, are working remote right now, so um, if you don't mind just kind of sharing some of the resources available. Uh, sure, absolutely. Thank you for that question. Um, so what the courses team has done is we've put together a, a coronavirus mitigation uh, course. Uh, the, you know, obviously we are not experts in COVID-19, but what we wanted to do was provide a course that brings together all of the resources. Um, so if you go into the course, of course the course is free. Um, you know, we've, we've put together all the resources that the WHO has made available with links to them, um, the CDC is making available. Uh, also, because we get asked this a lot, um, you know, we've created um, a kind of links to all of the TechSoup discount and donated donation programs uh, that might be relevant to nonprofits that are currently working remote, like, you know, Zoom and Slack um, and, um, you know, all of um, our Microsoft programs. We've also made, um, you know, we've provided links to all of the training and the courses that we have available. Uh, in addition, uh, together with Microsoft, we also have a COVID-19 track. We call it the Pivoting to Remote Work track. Um, and if you see your chat, you should be getting a link for that in there. Um, and really, uh, we've done this with Microsoft where we've identified uh, trainings within the Digital Skills Center um, that are relevant with the remote work you're doing today. So all of the courses on Teams, uh, like I mentioned before, um, you know, we've made free for all of the nonprofits. Um, the courses on SharePoint, OneDrive, Planner, Outlook, uh, the Ask the Experts. Um, so you'll find all of those in a single track. Um, and, if, and, you know, it's all free right now. Okay, perfect. And then uh, can you confirm, Mona, you don't have to have a TechSoup account to take TechSoup courses, correct? Uh, that's right. Um, you know, because TechSoup courses is for all staff, uh, so, you know, our TechSoup membership is based on your authorized admin, and we, we understand that, which is why for TechSoup courses, you don't need a TechSoup 
account, you don't need to be validated. You can just go in and create, uh, or all your staff can just go create their own logins and have access to all of our resources. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, I'm just going to go through these questions as they come in. So um, are the courses self-paced or do they have a time limit? All of our courses are self-paced. Um, okay. We do... Uh, we do offer some live events. So, for example, you know, the Ask the Expert, like I said, is a live event with a, uh, with a live Q&A. However, once the event is done, we make the course available on demand as well. Um, we also add resources. Uh, we add the like, Q&A and FAQs into that course. So even if you miss the live event, you could still come in and take it as a self-paced course. Um, and I do want to take this uh, opportunity to mention that we are currently working on 300 level courses uh, for the Digital Skills Center. Um, these are cohort based courses where, you know, we realize that uh, there are a lot of topics that nonprofits want to learn together. Um, so data analysis or impact measurement, for example. Specifically for that, we are creating 300 level courses, which would be a six week program with one hour a week where, you know, we all work together to solve a specific problem or, you know, so for example, build a dashboard together. So we all learn together and we can surface our questions together. Um, but, you know, even, even after the cohort course, once you finish it, you can still come back and take it in a self-paced manner. All right. Um, so our next question is, are nonprofit volunteers able to access courses? Yes, yes, yes. Everyone who can come in and make a and create a login can get access to these courses. Okay, perfect. Um, and then let's see, are any of the courses el eligible for continuing education credits? Um, not yet. Um, unfortunately, we are we are working on that as our um, next uh, stage. Thank you for asking that question. Uh, we we get a lot of uh, requests for that, so we are working on that, but unfortunately not yet. Okay, and then um, is there a publisher and access for Mac iOS users? That might be a question for Apurva. Um, I mean, just in, in regards to publisher, I mean, publisher is still, you know, it's a part of the still part of the Microsoft catalog. Uh, we don't have a course at this time uh, available through the Digital Skills Center with TechSoup, but um, something we can certainly certainly look into um, if, that's, if that's something that would be valuable uh, for a lot of folks. I'm sorry, may, maybe I missed the second part of that question. Uh, no, I think, I think that's it. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, I think that covers uh, most of the questions, we have uh, a couple questions just about the slides and the discount codes. So um, I just want to let everyone know that I'm going to be sending an email after the webinar is over with all of the relevant links that were in the chat and with the slides as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the um, end of our webinar. So thank you again, Mona and Apurva, uh, for today's presentation. Um, if you guys don't mind, just chat one thing that you learned in today's webinar. It's always really fun for us to kind of see um, what you learned today. We also have a post-event survey, so any feedback that you have for us, we review it really carefully, and we take that into consideration for future content. So if you don't mind just taking a couple extra minutes once you close out of the webinar to answer um, our survey, that would be super helpful. And we're also on social media, so feel free to give us a follow. We post lots of tips and tricks and how-tos and things like that. So. Um, feel free to give us a follow there. And then we also have a blog, which is blog.techsoup.org. Um, and then we have a few webinars that are coming up in April. If you're interested in registering, you can see the URL here. And we'll also be sending this out in our email. Um, as you know, uh, we have TechSoup courses, and we also have TechSoup services. So if you're interested in help desk or managed IT, you can find the URLs here, and we'll also include those um, in the email, and if you're interested, um, I, I know Mona gave you a one discount code, and then we'll also give you um, this discount code for any any TechSoup course of your choice. And I think that concludes today's webinar. So thank you uh, again, Apurva and Mona. Uh, thank you to our audience for attending today. Thank you, Shruti, Daphne, Stephen, and everyone on the back end 
for helping, and we look forward to um, seeing you guys again. And then also we are um, hoping to have another uh, COVID uh, webinar this week for updates on resources that are available to your nonprofit. Um, so just keep an eye on our, our um, webinars page and, and social media, and we'll make that announcement as they become available. So thank you all, and take care.